A fellow named Larry Mudgett. He's uh, an ex-infantry officer in the Vietnam era. He uh, spent his time in the 1st Air Cavalry, uh, a recipient of the Purple Heart. He served as an LAPD officer for 30 years, 35 years, and uh, was decorated numer numerous times. I am honored to stand in front of you or before you and have an opportunity to speak about the Second Amendment. I consider all of you to be patriots, and it seems that this country is about to be divided between redcoats and patriots. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start off talking about why the Founding Fathers included the Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights. I'm sure most of you know, but we are bombarded by politicians that would have us believe otherwise. We know what the Founding Fathers intended because they wrote and spoke about it at length. The primary reason for the Second Amendment was to ensure that the people would have the means to defend themselves from a tyrannical government. Yeah. We're there, yeah, I hear you. The founders intended that the army should never be better armed than the citizenry. Thus, the government could never control the people by force of arms. Our founding fathers understood that the greatest threat to liberty as a tyrannical government. Were the founders right? Yes. Yep. Or should we put our faith in the government to protect us? Yes. No! The murder of disarmed citizens by government was the number one cause of death in the 20th century. The most current studies claim that more than 290 million civilians were first disarmed and then murdered by their own governments between 1900 and 2000. These numbers do not include those killed in war. Virtually all of the governments who, and shadow governments who practiced democide were socialist or communist. All right, let's take a look at our own history very briefly. No foreign army has killed more Americans than Americans have. 618,000 Americans were killed by other Americans in the Civil War alone. During World War II, thousands of German, Japanese, and Italian Americans were imprisoned by the American government without due process. Our record on human rights and protection by the government is not perfect. The second reason that the founders mentioned in their speeches and their, and their writings for the Second Amendment was so that we could repel foreign invaders. Is this an archaic concept? No. Oh. When asked why they did not invade the United States after Pearl Harbor when there was nothing between the Japanese fleet and the West Coast, after the war, the admirals said, we didn't try to invade the United States. We were never going to try to invade the United States because we knew there would be a rifle behind every blade of grass. We frequently hear politicians in Washington say the only purpose for semi-automatic firearms is to mass murder as many people as possible. Well, first of all, there's about 3 million AR-15s out there right now. It would seem that if that was the purpose, they'd have, we'd have killed the whole country by now. <laughs> Secondly, every police officer in this country carries a high-capacity semi-automatic pistol, and most of them have AR-15s in their car. Who are they planning to mass murder? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think they carry those weapons for self-defense. I'm not talking about Homeland Security. I'm talking about our local police officers. Yeah! The police use those weapons for the same reason that you and I want to keep them. They are the most efficient self-defense firearms available. Compromise. We hear this all the time. We keep hearing compromise. Many would argue, many would argue that reasonable people can compromise and accept common sense gun laws. Compromise has come to mean how much of our liberty are we willing to surrender? No. All right, I'm ready to compromise. How about this? There are 20 or 30,000 gun laws in this country that don't meet constitutional muster. Let's start compromising by 
taking 10,000, 15,000 of them off the books today, and tomorrow we'll compromise some more. Yeah! This guy rocks. No, in the Second Amendment, there's a word that has a very, very powerful meaning that oftentimes we don't quite fully understand, and that word is infringed. So I went to Webster's. You know, the founders were learned, learned men, and they chose their words carefully. They didn't choose the word infringed on happenstance. The government may not touch our right to keep and bear arms in any way whatsoever. Amen. The right to keep and bear the means to defend and protect ourselves, our families, our communities, and our nation is, in fact, absolute. This cannot be changed by the past decisions of progressive activist courts. The Second Amendment is not negotiable. Yeah! The right to defend ourselves and to have the means to do so is not granted to us by the government. They'd like to think it is. These rights are given to us by God and the Founder said so. The Bill of Rights does not create our rights. It is merely the recognition of our God-given rights and a promise not to interfere with those rights. What does freedom mean to you? Freedom. James Berg, 1774. Berg was an English writer and an early advocate of free speech and equal opportunity. And the reason he's important to us is his writings were an inspiration to the founders of our new nation. And Berg said the possession of arms is a distinction between a free man and a slave. Slaves and serfs are prohibited from being armed by their overseers. The right to be armed is the guarantor of all other freedoms. Guns are, in fact, the teeth of our liberty. Yep. If this current administration in Washington believes that through executive order, an act of Congress, or a UN treaty, they're going to disarm the American people and leave us at the mercy of a tyrannical government, an invading army, or gangs of criminals that they have fostered, they are mistaken. The first time I swore the oath to defend the Constitution occurred when I joined the Army in 1966. And the second time when I swore the oath was when I joined the Los Angeles Police Department in 1969. And when I joined the Army, I was 19 years old, and I didn't know what was meant by I knew what was meant by enemies foreign, but I did not know what was meant by enemies domestic. I do now. When the British marched on Concord and Lexington to seize the guns of the colonists, it caused a shot heard around the world. In the end, a ragtag army of colonists defeated the most powerful government and army on the face of the earth. If any force again attempts to disarm the American people, they may be reminded of the words of Admiral Yamamoto after his military victory at Pearl Harbor. He said, I feel that all we have done is awakened a sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sheriffs all over America have notified Washington that they will fight to the death to defend the residents of their counties from abuse by the federal government. Last Governors all over winter. this great nation have told Washington that they will not enforce nor allow to be enforced any new federal gun laws in their states. Many Americans are comforted knowing that their counties and their states will stand between them and a tyrannical federal government. On the other hand, our governor has already capitulated before even knowing the full extent of these new federal proposals. <laughs> <laughs> Registration is a prelude to confiscation. It has no other purpose. Ask the Germans of the late 1930s. Hitler said, we just want to know where the guns are. And then he said, the government will protect you. Turn them in. 
what happened in England and Australia over the last decade. We just want to know where they are, register them. All right, we got the list, now turn them in or go to prison. The government doesn't want to register guns, they want to register you. They want to register you like you're a convicted child molester or a felon because you choose to exercise your Second Amendment right and own a firearm. Are you going to submit to being registered? No! no! If millions of Americans stand up for freedom, the tyrants will be forced to stand down. Yep. We will stand together or we will become subjects and the world's last home for hope for freedom will be lost. Thank you. Yeah!